start with uh, Lobsong Yeshi. Um, if you could please state his name and his age. I'm um, Lobsang Yishi, I'm 36 years old. And where were you born? Kiesa Kwaimas. Kiesa down the Laba. In Laba, Tibet. Laba? Laba. Laba, Tibet. Yeah. Okay. And what do you remember about Tibet? Pula de Sambala, Kianta, Timba Karisu de Essence. Pula de Karitaba Su de Essence. Pula Karitaba Su de Essence. The Suchi is a tumble salon, she said. The first thing that comes into his mind uh, when he thinks about Tibet is uh, his birthplace, which is in Narbat, uh, Tibet. So he spent a good part of his life in, uh, in that place. And then uh, after that, he also uh, he spent uh, a lot of time in the Kiti Monastery. So whenever he thinks of Tibet, uh, he thinks about the time that he spent in the monastery and his birthplace. Okay. Um, thinking about your birthplace, can you talk a little bit about your family and what your parents did? Mm -hmm. uh, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. His parents are uh, basically uh, farmers and uh, his mother died. Uh, so he has his father and he has uh, some brother sister in back in Tibet and his uh, younger sister right, is a nun and is in a nunnery. In Tibet? Yeah. Okay. And how many brothers and sisters does he have? Uh, uh, he has uh, uh, five sisters, two brothers, so they are all in all eight uh, um, siblings, and he's the eldest. Okay, yeah. and he said, so his father's still alive? Yeah. Palatanda Yorwa. Palayoma. Oh, no, he's alive. I'm sorry, he, his father died, his mom is alive. Okay, yeah. and is all his family still in Tibet? Yeah. Okay. Um, how do, does he keep in contact with them at all? Yeah. <coughs> how does he do that? Um, mostly through phone. Okay. Um, when did he join the monastery? Uh, you mean in Tibet? Or yes, in Tibet. In Tibet. He doesn't remember very clearly, but he became a monk when he was about eight or nine. Mm -hmm. And then he entered the monastery and started staying there when he was about 13 or 14. And then in 2002, he came here in exile mm -hmm. and he joined me. He, was, he came here. Okay. Yeah. And when did you leave Tibet? Uh, 2002. Oh, 2002? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you talk a little bit about your journey? Um, uh, he first, uh, from Hingaba, he went to Lhasa 
in, in vehicle. And then he stayed for a, in Lhasa, uh, he stayed in Debung Debu mm. Debu Monastery for about one to two months and mm. studied there. And then uh, meanwhile, he also contacted uh, uh, someone at the visa office and then he managed to get a visa. Okay. So from uh, Lhasa, he went to, uh, he traveled from Lhasa to Dam. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it, then border. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. From them, uh, he paid an Annapolis, um, what do you call, some, something like a tourist guide. He paid, he paid uh, some, uh, some money to the guide, and then from there, um, he tanda the shot and the nation by the la mutiny, joy so in bar, the money at home, what not draw, not more Okay, okay, sorry. Uh, he paid money to the guide, and with him, they traveled uh, near dam, there's a river. Mm -hmm. And then what they did was they tied um, themselves uh, between themselves uh, with rope. Mm -hmm. And there's you you usually see on the river some uh, typical uh, rope face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you hang on to that and then you uh, travel. And from there, then uh, he traveled uh, in a Nepalese uh, truck, and then he managed to get to Nepal. Okay. Yeah. And whenever you reached. Dharmasala and join the monastery here. Did you notice any differences in the monastery here versus that in Tibet? Uh, and media thoughts you did but you media don't you just enter your the first uh, difference that he notices is the um, number of the monks in the monastery back in tibet in kidib monastery uh, there were about uh, nito 2000 uh, monks in his monastery and if he talks about only his class there were about 100 students in the class Tanti so, uh, since he's talking about the number of the monks, the difference, uh, when he first came here in, the, in this monastery, there were about 220 monks. So, uh, because of the number of monks, uh, uh, how it operates, uh, the classes, uh, um, the prayer ceremonies, uh, I mean, it's much more disciplined here. Mm -hmm. So he, that's the first difference that he uh, uh, found out. And uh, he said that uh, in Tibet, you know, sometimes you manage, you know, if you don't go to some classes, if you don't go to prayer ceremonies, you mm -hmm. can just get, uh, you can mm -hmm. get away with that. But here you have to be very disciplined and you have to uh, go to every class because uh, in class there are lo uh, yeah, fewer uh, monks. So it's, uh, that's the main difference that he saw. Okay. Mm. Back in Tibet, what was your first interaction with the Chinese? Mm -hmm. Pena 
Uh, he said that uh, when he was born, Tibet was already on the Chinese occupation. Mm -hmm. So uh, individually, uh, he uh, doesn't remember having any interaction with the Chinese government or the Chinese personnel. Mm -hmm. But uh, what he remembers is that when he entered the Kiti Monastery, um, the Chinese uh, used to conduct this patriotic education class mm -hmm. uh, in his monastery that he didn't really like at all and he didn't uh, really want to uh, attend those sessions patriotic education he was he didn't really agree with that concept so uh, that he found he he, uh, he realized that he always used to feel very pressured because of that and uh, one thing that's not here is here and that dinner lola not you know call it how again but call six on sound the car soon that again but it's a touch because of that yes it was just she will also test this in front of my door and I'm not just been a ring it's a jita and you got to let up to bed and go back to the car she would ever did not think it and you can you know you can catch you are it and the go back to so to get a ginger jack to see good it's on your wall so soon on a lot this man react up to go on the account so there is this pressure uh, uh, on one side. There are some very senior monks in the monastery who had already faced uh, the Chinese occupation in their age. And they used to tell the younger lords that uh, you have to go to this patriotic classes because if you don't go, then you will uh, experience what we experienced uh, uh, during the cultural revolutions. We have to undergo very difficulties at that time. So you have to attend these uh, patriotic education classes. But then on the other side, he individually, you know, he doesn't really agree with uh, the concept and he didn't want to go there. So that's a very uh, big pressure that he faced. Okay, um, last background question for him. What is a very clear memory or a happy memory he has from Tibet? Mm -hmm. Uh, when he was in the monastery, um, every year uh, his classmates, uh, they used to get an opportunity to go out for picnic uh, with all the classmates uh, uh, twice a year uh, with all his classmates. So that's one memory that he always cherishes and he gets a happy feeling thinking about that. And then also when he was a child, uh, also in his school, he used to go. Uh, they all also get get to you know go for picnic once a year with his classmates. So that time he feels that you know he used to have a really good time. Okay, so we're gonna move on to mm -hmm. Sering next. Mm -hmm. If he could state his name and his age. Kursinla, kursinla ki lota ani ming di mo desh na ba nasus. Ani ming tau mo re mo re sen mong chen tau tau desh. Nasus. Ming la kanyao Sering di da. Uh, he feels he says that uh, except for the name, it's more or less the same what he says. <laughs> this is the, the background story. So his name is Kanya Tsirik and he's also 36 years old. Okay. Um, so he was born in the same place and came over at the same time? Uh, uh, his birthplace is the same, but he escaped into India at the end of 1998. So by the time when he reached uh, Dramsala, it was January 1999. Yeah. Okay. Um, were his parents farmers as well? Uh, yeah, they were semi-nomadic. They are both farmers and nomads also.
Is all of his family still in Tibet? Uh, yes. And you communicate over the phone? Yes. Um, Okay, so what is a difference that he noticed in the monastery in Tibet and the monastery here? Mm-hmm. 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 The first thing uh, that he remembers, uh, he, say, he says that uh, when he used to be in Kiti Monastery in Tibet, uh, in his monastery he stayed for about 10 years in Kiti Monastery in Tibet. So in his time there, uh, they didn't used to have any system of giving you know examinations so what they do at, at the monastery is they mark they mark up all the scriptures and then they used to present it to the teachers that's that apart from that they don't have any system of giving examination you don't sit down and write you know cushion papers and all that so when they first came here uh, I mean he said he also said that he has never been to any school also so when he first came here and then he had to undergo all these examinations and then after each examinations then you get promoted to another class. So that's one uh, system that he didn't get really used to and he felt a little uncomfortable. So that's the main difference. Okay. And could he share um, a clear happy memory from Tibet as well? Mm-hmm. Uh, when he thinks about Tibet, he thinks mostly about the time that he spent in the monastery uh, because he said that he stayed with his family only, when, only up till when he was age nine. So he has forgotten mostly uh, the memories except the time that he spent with his family. So mo- most of the time when he thinks about Tibet, he used to uh, think about the moments that he spent with his uh, friends in the monastery, with his classmates, and also as uh, Los Angeles said, the picnics, and uh, so mostly that. Otherwise he says that he doesn't remember much. Okay. So next we're going to move on to some questions about self-immolation, mm-hmm. since they're both from the Kirti Monastery and mm-hmm. a lot of the self-immolations have happened there. Mm-hmm. So could you tell them that? So how many people have self-immolated in the name of Tibet so far? Uh, yeah, the ship uh, uh, it says it's 141 uh, mm-hmm. inside Tibet till now. Mm-hmm. And from what I've researched, that's since 2008, correct? Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, starting in 2008. Yes. 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 Yes.
Yeah, it happened in uh, the first uh, self-immolation happened in Ngaba in uh, uh, 1998. It's in February 1999. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, the, the first monk who committed uh, self-immolation mm -hmm. was a monk called Tabe. Yeah. And how many people from your monastery have self-immolated? And either of them can answer these questions. Mm -hmm. uh, from his monastery, from Kitty Monastery, the number is uh, 15. And did you know those people personally? Chick <laughs> From the 15 of these uh, uh, monks who have self immolated, uh, personally uh, he says that uh, he knows only one. Uh, the rest uh, he get he got to know only through you know getting uh, information from inside Tibet after they self immolated. Mm -hmm. And uh, the one that he personally knows is uh, a monk called Losanamkil, Losanamkil, right? mm -hmm. and he used to study. Uh, he used to be a senior in his monastery. And how do you get the information about the self-immolations? Uh, Bonanti I so he says that the first self-immolation happened in February 2009, and uh, it was uh, it happened when there was uh, a kind of a, a melam um, festival uh, going on inside the monastery. So at that time, uh, they uh, came to know about this uh, self-immolation through someone in exile. So they just heard a bit about it, and then uh, they, since they are from Ngaba and he, since they are from Kidi Monastery, so they uh, began asking around. <coughs> so that's how it started. So basically, uh, how they get information, uh, how it works is that um, whenever there's something, uh, whenever there's self-immolation inside uh, in, uh, in Ked Monastery or in Ngaba, what they used to do is they used to get in touch with, uh, it can be someone from Ngaba who is uh, based in exile uh, in, in the Western countries and also in India and the best, best uh, sometimes there are also uh, Tibetans who are originally from Ngaba but they are based in uh, outside Tibet but in Chinese cities and all that so they used to get in touch with all of these people mostly through phone and then they try to confirm the news with each of them so that's how they usually uh, that's how it works and most of the time there have been cases where uh, Sometimes a self-immolation happens in this monastery and then they get to know about it and they can confirm it uh, within one or two hours. And sometimes uh, it 
gets quite difficult uh, to get to confirm. So they have to keep asking uh, these these people. So sometimes, uh, if self immolation happens today, it takes like a day, the next day, to report a, a, a confirmed news on it. Um. What is the reaction of the Tibetan community when someone self-immolates? Tibetan community. Rang mi message tang bi ni zhu zhu chun bi gao la pei bei qi song wen ne di la da da dan de zhu ruo na kan de qi du song si. Da kar zhu ruo da. Da lam san san si du. Hmm. Bi na lam shu jie de dong ma san san mei qi ha lam qia song de yuo shi. Ah, bi na da dang bu di de de bi ruo. Da de de. ชาวสังนาติตินดิสิมาริสัมสันรูจิอ่าจอยเนี่ยตีปารูจิงกันตรมีตรงกัดเยมอร์มอร์นรูเตอันนี้ตินดิสิจุมบริตากันตรมีช
to make it very clear that uh, they are both uh, monks of the Kiti Monastery mm -hmm. and uh, they started uh, getting involved in these self-immolations only because they are from Ngaba and most of the self-immolations have happened in Ngaba. So that's how they started, you know, uh, getting involved in these. So uh, it's not related in any way uh, to the Central Tibetan administration here. And uh, the, the monastery here itself, they have uh, supported them in uh, getting information from inside, inside Tibet when it comes to self-immolation. But then, uh, having said that, uh, they feel that uh, the position of the Central Tibetan Administration and even that of the Dalai Lama is that they have many times discouraged Tibetans from self-immolating. Uh, but they have uh, never uh, or uh, they can't, they don't have the position also to uh, give an order to uh, ask the Tibetans to stop the self-immolations because they can't uh, because he feels that uh, uh, not just him he also he says that the, the exiled Tibetan administration also says that uh, the self-immolations are an act of desperation desperation and uh, the Tibetans have no other options so that's uh, the central Tibetan administration understands that and um, yeah so that's the main position and uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> How does the Chinese government handle a self-immolation? Uh, <laughs> Tangani <laughs> Randomisa Sentry, that uh, we talk about the Chinese government uh, position on the self immolation he feels that the Chinese government are also uh, are very skeptical of this issue and uh, from if you look at it from outside uh, uh, he feels that um, maybe uh, the Chinese government uh, they don't uh, what they try to you know inform the world or make a face is that uh, they don't want the self immolations to happen in Tib in Tibet that's what the Chinese government are trying to uh, you know, show the show to the world, but then on the other side, he feels that maybe they want this to happen. Um, uh, he says that uh, the main cause, uh, I think, uh, is the Chinese government. The Chinese government is compelling uh, the Tibetans to self-immolate, and uh, even though they are trying to show to the world that they don't want these self-immolations, but he feels that the Chinese government are, in a way. Uh, you know, encouraging this self-immolations, and because if that's not not the case, uh, if you talk about this um, Kidi monastery, uh, of all the self-immolators, you know, almost uh, 15 of them have come uh, are from Ngaba Mon from Kidi monastery. So that's a huge number, and he feels that if the Chinese government doesn't want the self-immolations to happen, then they would have you know tried 
at least once or twice to look into the grievances of the self-immolators, uh, look into the uh, causes, uh, what really caused the self-immolations, you know. They, they should have tried to look into this and try to solve it, but then they have never even tried once to do that. Instead of that, uh, what they have done is, you know, um, arrest the uh, family members of the self-immolators, arrest the friends of the self-immolators. And not, not just that, uh, they have, uh, you know, uh, accused uh, this, uh, some self-immolators of, you know, being, uh, have, of having mental problems or having, you know, of engaging in self-immolations, uh, not because of political problems, but because of, uh, you know, social uh, family problems like that. So they have given lots of different names uh, to this. So he feels that in a way, the Chinese government is trying to show to the world that they don't want to, uh, they don't want these self-immolations. But then on the other hand, they are compelling the Tibetans to self-immolate. Maybe it's also because uh, he feels that uh, uh, he want uh, you know people uh, who have you know patriotic feelings toward the Tibetans, uh, uh, you know if they commit self immolations mm -hmm. and then the Chinese government repress them, then they want uh, you know the uh, the feeling of patriotism within the Tibetan community to stop. So that's maybe that's what he feels. <laughs> Чулулай Сусу сенсури шевина, жонны месок кембе. Ано няно петис, тис наба чаян рогу тири чунсу. Бунан гани на тиге, сэмэ мадэ чё гуа. Петис конан чучи на петис кэбар конан гу дьямни. Нима джин жонбо кэбар конан пишу че маду ба. Сэмэ мэ че бэ тэнди чун бэр. Нима юн нэсу ла жонны месок тэгэн сэм гэ кардэг нямо чэшу. Конан су нэмэ инжири. Нима дэн асу чагэр ем гэн ичин. Масу дирюдэсу. Пета Кобе also wants to add that uh, the Chinese government's position has been that they have many times accused uh, the Dalai Lama of uh, instigating the self-immolations inside Tibet, not just the Dalai Lama, uh, Kiti Rinpoche. Uh, they have also accused Kiti Rinpoche and they have also accused uh, both of uh, them uh, having, uh, of instigating the self-immolations inside Tibet. So he feels that, um, you know, uh, it's not true at all. And he feels that even you know uh, in the uh, during the times that uh, th they are involved in the self immolation when they are trying to get information from inside Tibet, you know there was there was a time when both of them felt uh, you know uh, so unhappy, and uh, you know it gave a lot of problem to them mentally also. And uh, if you talk about Kushi Tsringla also, he's saying that you know Kushi Tsringla has to had to you know switch off his mobile for a while. Uh, so that you know he don't he don't get to hear about the self immolations there were time you know it caused lots of you know internal uh, you know unhappiness in both of them and whenever they get try to get up in the morning they always uh, used to pray and feel that you know uh, i hope they are maybe maybe uh, you you know, you fear that you're going to hear about another self-immolation today. So they had to undergo uh, such, uh, you know, phase. And uh, if they had to undergo such phase, then you have to think about the seven family members of the self-immolators, what they have to go through also. So they can also, uh, you know, the first uh, uh, 
concern whenever there's self-immolation. The first concern is the family family members and what they go through. And the second is also them also, what personally what they had to go through. So he said that uh, the Chinese government inst uh, accused them of uh, you know, instigating uh, the self-immolations. If they had the position, if they had the opportunity, you know, if they were, if, if the Chinese government thinks that, you know, if they owns up, if they confesses that they, instig they are the ones who instigated the self-immolations and uh, because of that, if they say it and if so happens that uh, the self-immolation stops, if the self-immolation stops, if they confess uh, of having uh, instigating, then they, they, he said that they can do it, but then that's not the uh, issue. No. Then Canasum <laughs> He wants to add that um, if the Chinese government really genuinely uh, wants the self-immolations to stop inside Tibet, it is in their hands. They are the one who caused the self-immolations and he feels that uh, it is in their hand to stop it. And uh, apart from that, uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama, neither His Holiness the Dalai Lama nor the exiled Tibetan administration, nor both of them, you know, they don't have any options. I mean, they don't have the choice. Uh, they are not the ones uh, who can stop these self immolations. Uh, uh, they can only, uh, you know, appeal. Uh, but then uh, that's that's uh, you know the most that they can do. Otherwise, uh, it's all. It's, uh, everything is in the Chinese government's hand. Uh, if they genuinely want it to stop, you know, then it's in their hand and they can stop it. Otherwise, there's no one, no one who can do that. What would it take for the Chinese to stop the self-immolations? Tanga 
and the Dobiago Tola can also be a Pachambayana, Nitaran, Mesasing, Taran, and it's soon be Mobu Nitan, Tumal or Rashinki, Medrage, the motto. Dichi Captain Dichin Leba in a Tadon, Gentu Dechi, Miss Pato Jita. He says that um, in Tibet it's not just a self immolation, there have been uh, lots of you know protests in different forms, you know. Uh, people have, you know, gathered together. They have gone out to the street and, uh, you know, protested literally against the Chinese government. So self-immolation is not something that happened, you know, suddenly. Uh, it has, you know, come forward, uh, you know, over a course of time. Uh, like uh, all, ev like anything, uh, like every other situation that happened in uh, worldwide, in other countries too. The same thing happened in Tibet. You know, people have tri tried different means of showing their, you know. Uh, disagreement with the Chinese government's policy. Uh, the Tibetans have, you know, um, gone uh, to different lands to show their disagreement with the Chinese government. So they have protested and they've done many things, uh, but then there have never been any change in the Chinese government policy. So that's how the self emulations happened. Uh, it's not, it didn't really happen suddenly and all like that. So the Chinese government, uh, what they have to do is they have to really go to the ground and try to investigate the real problems of the the uh, Tibetan people, the real grievances of the Tibetan people. Uh, they have to, uh, you know, investigate and uh, look into the real aspiration of the Tibetan people. They, this is one thing that they haven't done till now. So they have to do it. So, uh, and also the more important thing also is to, you know, they have to uh, invite His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Tibet. And then they have to solve the situation of the Tibetan problem. Otherwise, if they don't, they haven't done this till now. They haven't even tried doing this till now. So if they do it, and then uh, not just the self-immolation, the, the protests and everything, it will uh, you know stop uh, uh, gradually. And then he feels that uh, the Chinese government, what they have done is you know uh, try to solve uh, solve the self-immolations by you know giving uh, economic uh, you know aid to some family, or, uh, or you know try to. Um, you know, build uh, you know the infrastructure of one uh, village. You know, to develop the village economically. Uh, that's what they are trying to do. But then, uh, self-immolation is uh, not uh, uh, an act of you know uh, that's based on individual. Uh, it's not an individual act. It uh, you know represents uh, the whole the Tibetan. Uh, scenario, the problem. So he feels that uh, what the Chinese government have done and what they are trying to do by giving economic aid to the Tibetan people and hoping that the self emulations will stop is not the right thing. So until the time when Chinese government really goes to the spot and then know the grievances of the Tibetan people and then invite the His Holiness the Dalai Lama to Tibet and then so uh, to you know to try to you know unite the Tibetans inside and outside, uh, until then this will not stop. Penera, Umatnatinity, your So he says that uh, His Holiness the Dalai Lama escaped Tibet uh, when he was 25. And now, in another week or so, uh, we are uh, celebrating his 80th birthday, and uh, the, uh, the preparations is going out here also. So, if you look at just this uh, point only, 
His Holiness the Dalai Lama having to stay in exile when the time when he was 25 till the time when he's 80, he spent his whole life in, in exile and he had to uh, spend his whole life in exile. So if you only think, think about on that side, you know, you can, uh, he feels that uh, you can understand the situation of the Tibetan people. Inside Tibet, there are millions uh, who wait their whole life to get a glimpse of the Dalai Lama, uh, to uh, wait, who wait and pray for His Holiness the Dalai Lama to return back to Tibet. But then he's here, uh, you know, uh, started, uh, started living in India when he was 25, and now he's celebrating his birthday, 80th birthday. So if you just think about, uh, think on this, that side only, you can, uh, you know, uh, that's really clear enough, uh, the aspiration, what the, the, the Tibetan situation, you can understand. So if, if the Chinese government thinks like things on that and try to, you know, uh, touch their hand on this problem and then begins doing something about it, then the self-immolations will stop gradually. Otherwise, uh, he says that no one would really, you know, who would want to, you know, uh, not want to live uh, alive, who want to stay alive. Uh, no one would want to, you know, commit uh, self-immolation and, you know, uh, have this, uh, to have, have to endure this, endure this pain. So uh, that's what he feel. Mm -hmm. So um, we are celebrating uh, the Dalai Lama's 80th birthday in a week or so. So if you look at it from outside, you know, you will feel that uh, you will see that uh, it looks like we are all trying to, you know, have, having have a party, a big party. It's like a celebration. But then if you uh, think about it on the other side, there are lots of people who feel that it is also uh, a time to grieve also. <coughs> it's not just celebration. It's a time, it's a matter of grief also. Because uh, it shows, you know, uh, His Holiness, uh, uh, the length of time that he had to stay in exile. So there are lots of Tibetans inside Tibet who are also getting ready uh, for the uh, idiot ce uh, celebration, but a celebration who wants to, you know, celebrate in, in their own way. But then there are lots of Tibetans who also shed tears always, uh, thinking, um, you know, that uh, this is the sad fact uh, that His Holiness had to stay in exile, even though he's still eight, he's nearing 80 now. So uh, if the Chinese government, you know, even, uh, you know, uh, thinks about this fact. If they begin thinking about this fact just by thinking about it, you know, then he feels that uh, there is a chance of, you know, having, uh, of stopping the self-immolation. So that's what he's trying to say when he said that, you know, it is in the Chinese government's hand to stop the self-immolation, not anyone else. Um, you mentioned before other types of protests that Tibetans have done. Why do you think that so many self-immolators have ch chosen that form of protest? Why do why do people self-immolate oh, if there are so other okay. so many okay. other ways to protest? Shen da da gana shun lang ngogu chie ge lam ga shen da yue ba yin na ruwa da da yin ngogu kian biu da din de song ruwa yue ba yin na rang lu merse di chi gui chi gum zi zou de ka nei zi. Ji, shi zhang dun de da ngam ma ge ma su ju ji se ya ling ni sar ji se ya da de su ju gu liu liu ru jin zou ruwa da ni wei lu ru na da da du ren yi xi ni ji gui ni da ya ji na da da la sa lang ngogu chin bu chi zhong bu ruwa. Ti 
Tapi cukup dengan pukul saja sampai dalam jari jari anda. Ani pukul itu tanda ni dalam jiran tangguh kerja itu pun pukul pukul lah cikir jaja sana cikir sian anda. Tadi jaring dulu tadi jari tadi ni dalam mampu jombar. Tahun ini pun jari tanda pensi ramu cik utuh pi oni. Ani yang tu tanda kerja ni yang sih sun bi tadi main bi tadi pukul tanda pukul pun lihat tadi yang sih tanya tadi ni terma mampu jombar. Tapi cukup dengan si cikir itu ni tuan jaga ni sendiri ni tuan jaga ni sendiri lah. Pebat itu pergi ke jalan kan drogat itu, jangan orang kau mau mai yaudah mereka tu pesu tau ni mesti anda drogi. Jadi china, mesti kita semua nak mesti kita cuma ni ke jalan tu, kau jinju dah ucil wah. Jadi kita tu cuma buat kita nak. Yang sebab cuma tu, yang nak korang kesal lagi, kesal kau lah yang tu. Tadi ramon cikgu mana? Tapi bapa nak betul, mesti saya cuma semua cuma cikgu tiga. Tadi ni tu cuma si, kau buat cikgu ni tu, saya ni mesti sosial. Jari jari ni tadi cuma jari cuma jari ni, pas kes lawa cuci ni. Lo jeringan ada, cuma kalau juga tengket sahaja. Tapi tema yang big, ini pun jangan kita nak kusah yuji pun buku pergi cik itu ni kita nanti ya. Sebagai orang yang kui saya tiada cuma cik itu juga pasal ni kui itu ni kapten orang lepas orang cini lini ni pia kui itu nanti buku pun nanti cik itu ni jaga kelihatan sampai ni cakap pun saya agak ni tu nanti kita mampu cuma ni. Orang tu mesti ok ni tu agak perlu cuma yang mana kerjin macam cuma ni. Ini tu kerja cincu orang berisik. Ini tu gua perlu tu zaman susu kan guru guru juga kan? Ia beti. Pisu tangkar cibir. Jangan jangan cikar tangsa mewah sorry. Tapi cikar tangsa mewah sorry orang tu macam ni beri na dobel kan kan mewah. Lusin kita lah kerja zoom itu pergi cincu orang tu. Tapi cikar mewah macam ni ramai mesak ni tu cincu beri. Mata cik kurang sihat cik cikar jambat cik yoni cincu mana? Ini orang tak cuci cik lahir. Orang tak kerja cik. Tapi orang tu mesak orang ini cukup. Tanda Bukan semua gaya ada, pemain semua gaya ada, penjaga semua gaya ada, cuma tak cegah gaya ada. Biar terdalam rezeki yang tak kari cegah rezeki ada. Cuba yang asalnya sempit cuma gaya ada. Nampak cegah lah, jadi zaman ini ini kira nanti ini biar terima orang mahu berusaha untuk gaya ini cuma sebab ini. Tiada bapa lah cuma dia macam itu, jangan lah cuma dia macam itu. Mungkin cara sangat suruh gaya ada. Ini mungkin kari cegah gaya ada. Khusus kau macam ini, kau yang mana? Cuma dia cegah macam itu, itu gaya ini kari nanti cegah cegah lah. Tiada ini orang cegah cegah gaya ada, saya mungkin asalnya sempit cuma gaya ada. Quite long. <laughs> I'll try to. Uh, he, feels, uh, he says that um, if you talk, uh, if you go back in history in Tibet, you know there have been democratic reform, there have been cultural revolution. So there have been lots of uh, you know different sorts of protests inside Tibet. Tibetans have you know uh, tried different mean, means of you know uh, means of protest uh, uh, to show their grievances against the Chinese government. So in 1988. Uh, Around 1988, there had been a big protest in Lhasa. So at that time, uh, what happened was, you know, thousands of Tibetans took to the streets and protested against the Chinese government. But what the Chinese government uh, did, the first thing was they came out with guns and they tried to shoot the Tibetan people. So uh, they made it impossible for Tibetans to come out in the streets and protest. And Tibetans have also tried, you know, uh, you know, going out on the street and pasting, you know, slogans on the walls, uh, saying Tibetans are happy in their own land, Chinese are happy in their own land. They have tried pasting these slogans. Uh, they have also gone out to protest. And even the Panchen Lama, uh, the former Panchen Lama, has um, submitted a petition, uh, the 70,000 character petition, to the Chinese government. But all of this didn't bring out any result. And what the Chinese did. You know, the Chinese government have created such an atmosphere where the Tibetan people, they have, you know, no, no other means of, you know, uh, going uh, to show their grievances to the Tibetan, uh, to the Chinese government. Because if they go to the street uh, to protest, they just shoot and, uh, and then if you uh, put these slogans and then, uh, you know, uh, they arrest you and then they uh, sentence you to like four, five, six years in prison. And then, uh, so because of all of these, you know, the Tibetans, they have, uh, you know, uh, he feels that it's an act of desperation. He feels that uh, uh, the Tibetans, it's not like the Tibetans have, you know, tried, they didn't try other means, uh, like it's not like that. Just like, you know, uh, things that have happened in, in worldwide, in different countries, the same thing in, uh, has happened in Tibet, you know, Tibetans have tried every other means, but it didn't bring out any tangible result. So the self-immolation is the last resort the, Ch the Tibetans have to, you know, uh, they had to do it. So um, uh, that's why he, he feels that, uh, you know, that it's an act of self, uh, it's an act of desperation. And uh, 
since they didn't have any other choice, you know, that's how uh, you know they can understand uh, their position because the, both of them personally, he also feels that they don't have any other choice because the Chinese have shut all doors uh, to the Tibetans. Uh, to show their uh, grievances. So that's the only uh, means. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to do this. 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 That's a mission. We linger to that team at the time. And then we feel so. Now one thing there is. Now there's one question left after this self in because they have tried every other means and now they have tried self immolation. So now there's one question: what else to do? So uh, when they think about it, you know, they get the feeling that there might come a time when Tibetans have to sort to, you know, violence means of showing uh, their uh, grievances against the Chinese government. But then if you think about it, it's not going to bring any positive results both to the Tibetan people and to the Chinese government. So it's in the Chinese government's hand to stop this self termination and do something about it. Mm. Sivayan <laughs> Police is a pan time shop in Bene. Police is a mission to Toguba. Good the chim. Police is a trini. Coronshia, Tapshi, Chigger. Till current song you are achieving. Copam random miss of time to meet Chicken Town in the Genansa, which is a language chicken. Such a monarch you are in Cusconte. Could the Gucci Luton, Chivet, Bumeritan, any deal, Pembershire, Simon, Colonel Chicago, Sim Colonel Jambodo, Colonel number to a tiny chicken tony. Legatigibon <laughs> What, 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 what else is there to do, you know? He feels that there are people who... who uh, there is this question whether self-emulation is, uh, you know, violent or non-violent. So personally, uh, all of us look at this, when you look at it, you know, uh, he refers to a video um, that they managed to get from inside Tibet of a Tibetan who has self immolated and who was on his bed. And uh, in the video, in the short video that they saw, uh, they could see the self immolator, you know, at peace and uh, folding his hands together. Uh, that's one video that he saw. And then another video, what he saw was uh, one uh, self immolator who was in the act of self immolating. And then there were Chinese policemen. If he had the choice, you know, he could have, you know, just ran towards the Chinese policemen and embraced, then he would have also burn too but then he doesn't do that he runs away from the Chinese police so if you look at the self emulations the first thing uh, that comes to mind is you you look at in a you feel that it's violent it's so drastic and all that but then if you think very carefully you know if you look at the intention of the self emulator uh, they are doing it uh, for the benefit of all the Tibetans if you look at the intention then you know that it's uh, it's non-violent uh, but then that's a last non-violent act that the Tibetans have to go through. So that's why this question comes, what else can we do now? Or what is there to do now? That's why he gets very concerned when he thinks about uh, what happens after this now, because this is the last resort of the nine Wallen means. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So you've mentioned that self-immolation has been successful at other parts of the world where they've used it as political protests and it's incited um, uprisings and rebellions that have been effective. Um, can you ask them why it, they think it hasn't been effective for the Tibetans with so many people who have self-immolated in Tibet where sometimes only one person self-immolating can cause a rebellion, a successful uprising? Uh since there's a lot of difference uh, between uh, you know other countries and uh, the self immolation that's happened inside Tibet, um, he says that the first the first self immolation happened was uh, he doesn't mention the country, but he says the self the first self immolator was a vegetable seller, was a street vendor, so. Uh, when he self-immolated, you know, thousands of people gathered together. It eventually resulted in a big change in that country. Uh, but then uh, uh, it, depend, it's, it depends on different situation. So he feels that uh, the country that we are concerned uh, right now is uh, we are uh, tackling with the Chinese government, who is very powerful. But then if you look at other countries at that time, in those times, you know, he feels that uh, the government in question uh, in that country is not that powerful compared to the Chinese government. That's one thing. And also uh, uh, the international uh, support that comes also along with that, there's also a big difference because it's Chinese government we are talking about right now. Even though the international government you know, tries to talk with Chinese government, they don't listen at all. Uh, that's one thing. And then uh, he also feels that uh, in other countries where self-immolations have happened, you know, even if one person have committed self-immolation, thousands rise together and, uh, you know, there is a situation where, th where there's a possibility to people to come together and then rise against the government in question. But then if you talk about Tibet, uh, it's so much under the Chinese government, especially after 2008 protests. You know, if you talk about the current situation, everywhere in Tibet it's like martial law. You know, the Chinese government, they have created a situation where the Ch Tibetan people, there's no way for them to, you know, even if there's one self immolation, there's no way for the Tibetans to, you, you know, gather together in, you know, at one time in different places and create a revolution. That's impossible. So he feels that, uh, if you think about it, he feels that we are very unlucky because the government that we are tackling with is the Chinese government, who is very powerful. And uh, that's the main, so it, he says there are lots of different reasons, but that's the uh, main thing that he feels. 
Um, what should we, as people who are also invested in the Tibetan struggle, um, do when there is a self-immolation? The Quran says, "Do not touch the head of the Buddha, nor the head of the Buddha." The Kajakan Ani that uh, you as a Westerner, what you can do is uh, he feels the main, the most important thing is to know the real uh, causes of the self immolation for you to know what are the real causes. Uh, he says that uh, both of us are monks, uh, we are not politicians, and we can guarantee that we are saying the truth. Uh, when we have interviewed about the self immolation as well. So you as a Westerner, what you can do is to, you know, if you go back to talk with your, your friend, your family, and then uh, gradually, you know, your, your leaders, and then of course, the uh, US is a democratic country, and then uh, you have to uh, tell uh, your, uh, first to begin with, you have to begin with your friends and family to tell them the real truth, uh, to tell them why the Tibetans are committing self immolations, to tell them that it's not a suicide, it's a self immolation that has reason, uh, that are valid reasons. So you have to know that and then you have to spread this uh, message to everyone. And then through this, through this, uh, he hopes that, you know, uh, by step by step, you begin with your friends and you begin with your family and then you gradually. Uh, the word, uh, the message, you know, uh, goes up to the topmost level, and then you know he, you ho he hopes that at least, even if uh, at least uh, even if the U.S. government can uh, raise the issue with the Chinese government on this, then it'll be very helpful. <laughs> Katuyan <laughs> Pregnant, <laughs> <laughs> 
ตึนดิกนิตังกตอลคานซอลนิวามมองบอยอเรกอกเกวมองบอยอเรตึนดิมาตอตาเซนพอนังลังซอลลักบากิญาญาฟซายอมมาตาจานาชงกิกะกะร
Um, what is your hope for the future of Tibet? Tapuka <laughs> <laughs> First of all, he's just started as a joke that he, he wants an independent t- Tibet, but then he says it's just a joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, he says that uh, it's very difficult to see uh, the future. Um, his Holiness the Dalai Lama always talks about impermanence and uh, you never know when you are going to die. So you never know what what's going to happen in future. So it's very difficult. But then personally, um, he feels that um, when there comes a time when, uh, you know, what the Tibetan uh, uh, people has right now uh, to show to the world, uh, or which can benefit the world, is the Tibetan Buddhist culture. So he feels that, you know, Tibetan Buddhist culture and, uh, and the Tibetan identity, in keeping alive the Tibetan identity in general, is some, it's very important and it's something that, that can benefit not just Tibetans but the whole uh, uh, mankind <laughs> or the whole world. So he feels that uh, whenever there comes a time uh, uh, that when the Tibetans can freely uh, avail the rights of, you know, keeping alive the Tibetan identity, of keeping alive the Tibetan Buddhist culture, then this is something that he wants to see. Otherwise, he doesn't want to talk about political boundaries and everything. That's all other matter. He only wants to think about that stuff. Yeah. like you said. <laughs> Manzo <laughs> ตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัดตัด
constitution is something that he wants. That's his dream. And as Lopsan Ishila said that, uh, you know, uh, he's waiting for that day uh, when the Chinese government grants uh, the Tibetan people a journey and uh, autonomy rights where the Tibetans can, you know, govern their own uh, uh, country, uh, whether with the Chinese government or whether without the Chinese government, it doesn't matter. But you have to have your own rights where you can, you know, uh, keep alive your Tibet issue um, uh, to protect your uh, own uh, Tibetan Buddhist culture and the whole thing. This is something that he dreams of. And within those, uh, within that atmosphere, uh, if there comes a time when His Holiness the Dalai Lama can return back to Tibet, and when the Tibetans can stand the, on their own feet and then govern their own, uh, you know, uh, country, that's uh, one dream that he always has and is waiting for that. Um, well. I would like for you to tell them that I understand that self-immolation can be a, an emotional thing to discuss and thank, thank them very much for their willingness to share all of this with me and on behalf of the University of Arkansas and the TEX program just thank you also for spending this time. It was a very long interview and I'm very glad that they stayed and um, shared their stories and their information with us. Uh Tanaki <laughs> He also wants to thank you uh, for taking interest uh, in the Tibet issue and then in uh, interviewing them about the self emulations He wants to thank you, especially also through Gishla, uh, the whole university. And he says that um, uh, uh, right now you have asked them about self emulations So uh, he, he says that they are also. You should also ask, uh, try other means of knowing. Uh, the Tibet issue really well, and uh, to know the to know, to know the truth behind the Tibet issue, and through that you, you know you also have the means, and uh, it's you, he feels it's also your responsibility uh, to spread the word uh, to the world. So he wants to thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.